Hi, this is DarkFox27, and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Uh, today, we're basically going to be doing Navmesh. I hate Navmesh, but I've been promising this tutorial for a little while now, so I'm going to crack on with it. Uh, as you can see, I have loaded up my classic in, which I've used in one or two other tutorials, and uh, I've got good old Barney Blue here. Um, as you can notice, I, I haven't obviously uh, cluttered it properly like your place will be. Uh, I've just dumped a few things around which are going to aid in showing you how to do it. So, first thing you want to do when you've got your cell loaded up is click that lovely nav mesh button up the top there. And I'm just going to guide you through uh, some of the basic controls. This isn't really going to be ridiculously advanced tutorials. It's just going to be nice and simple, get you to do a nice quick nav mesh of your uh, house or dungeon. So, First up we've got the three most important things. You've got uh, the selection here to be able to select triangles, verticals or edges. So obviously it determines which part you're going to be selecting so that you're not moving the wrong um, part of the nav mesh. So if you have them all unticked you're obviously not going to be able to select anything. Um, to show you this working I'm actually going to just uh, do a quick bit of nav mesh here. So there we go so you've got enough mesh there and as you can see if you've got triangles highlighted you can select triangles and move them about if you've got your verticals highlighted you can select only the verticals so you're not going to accidentally select the edges and you can move those and then if you've got the edges you can obviously move and select the edges now uh, the reason you might want edges selected as well is while verticals are also selected you can alternate click and you can add other verticals right onto an edge which is really really useful so um, I'm going to show you how I basically just nav mesh that now you can go any way you like have whichever ones you want active or inactive at any time uh, whatever works best for you and makes it easier for you uh, I'm going to take those two off for now and we're going to start with how to do verticals so basically the, the, the controls all the shortcuts are placed on the left hand side of the keyboard to make things that little bit more easier for you so you can easily get there with your left hand and then your other hand to basically obviously move the mouse so um, alternate click for me it's right click and it's probably that for a lot of people but if you're left handed be the other way around so you do that and you will get a nice vertical uh, you always hold down the left control key and click it again and then again and once you've clicked it three times while always holding down the uh, left control you will end up with the triangle and as you can see the two verticals here this is where your next triangle is going to come off from so if I was to click there as you can see we've got another triangle uh, I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to show you what happens if you've got those two selected but you wanted to come in the, this direction you'd obviously want those two selected. Uh, to do that just tap tab and you can swap round for which verticals are selected and obviously if I was going this direction again I'd have them selected but what if I hadn't got the uh, right two selected if I click there you'll see what happens you cross over your nav mesh and you're going to have a lot of problems so um, you can control and Z just to undo that and you'll still have the vertical so delete that so you want to be sure that you're doing that always holding down control and then alternate clicking to keep navigating round and you can get really quick at this uh, to begin in, um, sorry I apologize to begin with you will be probably rather slow at this uh, just to get used to the controls um, I'm gonna go with that you already know the basic controls of the kit so moving around and obviously scrolling about so um, other thing to mention is how to view your nav mesh now when you're in an exterior cell you're obviously going to have a lot more bumpy terrain and your nav mesh is going to end up slipping underneath that terrain so usually the problem we'd end up having is a good example here if we've got it buried under the ground you can't see all the nav mesh yet it is there so you have these three views here on the tool uh, toolbar uh, view mode standard on top and nav mesh only so if you tick that view there the middle one you can see all the nav mesh even if it's buried beneath objects or land uh, this one will remove everything but the nav mesh uh, you just want to make sure you've got the sky turned off there and you can see your nav mesh there this is really good when you've got um, sort of a, a generated nav mesh which I'll show you in the moment and you just want to delete a few pieces which uh, don't fit or that you don't need 
and you've got all that junk in the way so that's what that view is good for personally I don't use that a lot and I certainly don't do um, generated nav mesh but I'll show you how to do it anyway because it is part of nav meshing um, generated nav mesh is basically taking away a lot of the hard work for yourself uh, it's where the game tries to take a look at what you've built and it will attempt to do it for you it never does it uh, perfectly but it gives you a good uh, a start so what you want to do you want to make sure you clicked outside of the void so just click there somewhere go under nav mesh generation recast based and don't do this until you've got your nav mesh toolbar open otherwise you it's obviously not going to work and um, you used to have to change one or two of these numbers but uh, since the update to the creation kit they've actually um, stopped that now so it's just how it needs to be so you don't have to worry about all that go ahead and click OK might take um, a little while depending on the speed of your PC so you've just got to be patient with it you can see down here it'll tell you what it's doing and um, it should come up saying finished finalized and you'll see it happen if not just click it again so uh, as you can see it's done an okay job um, it's nav mesh most of the area. It's actually gone around a lot of the static items, uh, which is a good thing. And let's just check. Yep, it's noticed that the uh, the pots are not static items, so they're movable. So you'd want the nav mesh going under. So that's something I'm actually going to note. Static items, things that don't move, you want to nav mesh around because otherwise your NPC is going to be trying to climb on boxes or on top of tables, and it doesn't look good. So anything that can move, you obviously want to still nav mesh there because if it moves, the NPC needs the ability to still walk in that, that space that's been created. Uh, the other thing with nav mesh is you've got a marker here, and as you can see, uh, when it's uh, recast the nav mesh, it's actually not gone over the marker. So the NPC at this stage would be unable to actually use uh, that, that wall marker there because it, it can't nav mesh onto it it needs to have nav mesh under it so if you were to drag it there the NPC can now actually ac um, access that marker so that's one thing you have to be uh, double sure of when you do your nav mesh is that there is nav mesh on the markers or under the markers so that they can uh, they can access it so like I said as you can see you can do it this way and then you can edit from there so here the door isn't linking up uh, the nav mesh isn't linking they won't be able to get through that door or your nav mesh has to link so you'd obviously go through you delete that like I said I don't do it this way uh, personally I prefer to do it myself so another good thing to show you here something very useful is we want to link those three triangles up uh, sorry those three verticals up to make a triangle now um, this saves you deleting it and then just doing it yourself like you need to link them up still so you highlight the three verticals that you need by holding down control and selecting them and then you can just tap A and as you can see A fills it in and then you can just highlight that one tap A again that's the basics of nav mesh uh, what I am going to do I'm going to find the uh, the written tutorial on nav mesh which is on the creation kit wiki I do believe and I'll drop that in the description because uh, that might help you out a bit with anything that I've missed because I'm not going through absolutely everything but um, I thought my other nav mesh tutorial was a little vague to be honest didn't include everything it needed so I'm just going to go along a bit I'm going to show you a, a few other things that I haven't shown you before a um, few of these here I don't use a lot of these whenever you've done like a uh, nav meshing a dungeon it's all fully nav meshed and you can actually tell it to um, find out where the best cover is for NPCs so it'll find static objects that it can hide behind um, little bits in the wall where it caves, uh, goes in a bit so they can hide behind walls and basically the way you do this you just tap that that strange button there it says um, find covers and edges for the current cell and you can do that I I don't need to do that on here because it's just an in but you click that and you'll get a load of funny uh, white boxes and everything appear and you can delete the ones that you don't want and just tweak the ones that you do want to be behind cover so that's another nice thing to note there uh, this tick here this is a very very vital thing um, one thing people always get wrong with their nav mesh or forget to do not necessarily get wrong excuse me not necessarily get wrong uh, is they've nav meshed the whole house and an NPC will not follow them in or out of the house and this is basically because uh, your doorway here once you've linked to the world which is in a, another tutorial once you've linked your interior cell to your exterior cell or it could be an interior to an interior um, you basically need to to do some nav meshing here so I'm just going to delete this because this is a little messy so by your door you just want one large triangle if you can which is basically going to cover 
if not all, then uh, the majority of the door marker. So this door marker here you get when you've uh, linked to the world. Just gonna... So there we go. And basically what you've got to do, you've got to do this on each side of the door. So both doors, both markers. And you've got to make sure you've got selected your triangle selection there. Uh, just click on the triangle that it's it's on. And then you can press that wonderful tick there. If you get anything like that, just click yes to all. It's usually just some stupid uh, creation kit bug. We know there's a lot of them. And as you can see, if I just click off that, it's actually highlighted it green. Uh, this means that you've succeeded. And you just have to come out of nav mesh, double click on your marker, go to the other cell and just do the same on that side. And now your NPCs will be able to follow you in and out. So that's a very, very important part of nav meshing. Otherwise, you can have a lot of problems. Um, other things to know, let's go along, just check a few things. Um, inverse flood fill, that basically selects pretty much all of the nav mesh in the entire area. Um, I don't want to do that. But it's a, it's a nice tool to have just to quickly select everything. Uh, a lot of things here, deselecting and stuff, are really useful things. Uh, another thing I'm going to show you is how to like join two verticals, just zip them together. Well, that was good, zip them together. Um, so this button here, merge verticals, as you can see, it collects them. Well, not collects, uh, stabs them, slaps them together, if you will. And that's really useful when you've got two sets of nav mesh and you want to bind them together. So click it again. Does the same again. Obviously, that's just gone and affected my door, so you've got to be careful what you're doing. But uh, that's another useful little tool to have. Uh, another really, really wonderful thing here. Uh, people have said, I've got a guy who's, I've nav meshed the whole place. I've got a guy supposed to be showing me to some place. And for some reason, he's taking a, a long route or he's bumping into things. What you can do on this, if we had Barney Blue here and we wanted him to mo move over to that bench there. What you can do, um, consider making sure that you've got selected the triangle selection there is you can click on a triangle, click this wonderful button here, and you'll see it goes a funny, weird orange colour. Now, this basically means you've marked it as preferred paving, and as you might have guessed, you can pave the way for your NPC to go. So, what you're doing here is you're just making a path of the triangles, which is telling the NPC this is the best path to use when you're heading here. And you can zip it off into all the rooms if you want, so uh, if you've played, if you've downloaded and used my followers pack and you've seen Vaden's house, then there's actually two routes he could take to go to the pub. Uh, there's the route where I've made a path down uh, the hill and there's a route where he can go round some funny rocks and pretty much get stuck. So that's sort of where you'd usually pre prefer paving. Uh, you'd send him down the hill and you just mark down the hill. So same as you've done here. Mark all the way down. Just be sure that you don't leave any gaps because it might confuse the, the NPC entirely. So you just go ahead and do that. I'm not going to finish it off, but you get the idea. So like I said, uh, with like idle markers and stuff, which are coming up in my AI package tutorial, which will be done after this one, um, you want to make sure that anything like idle markers or wall markers here, lean markers, anything like that, or benches like here, you want to make sure that the markers are on the nav mesh. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to use that item. So uh, that's the, the really tricky parts of nav mesh. Uh, I'm going to be going into an exterior cell as well in a moment and showing you how to do that because there's there's something different with exterior cells when it comes to nav mesh. Uh, just checking that I've told you pretty much everything about it here. I think I have. Yep, pretty much. Okay, so I'm just going to pop into an exterior cell for you. Okay, here we are. We are in our exterior cell now. Uh, we're in Riverwood. Uh, the first thing you can see is a uh, lovely preferred paving has been laid out. Uh, that is usually where you'll sort of see preferred paving is on like roads to stop them from taking a long way around, like going through a bush or something to get into a city. Uh, the next thing you'll notice is like this green line here. Now, I like to call this uh, a bridge, if you will, across two cells. Uh, basically, because of how large the exterior is, uh, it's obviously split into cells, sort of like your interiors are, really. And um, it, you need a bridge across the two cells with the nav mesh. It doesn't just cross over to the next cell. Um, I'll try and show you here. If I select that there, as you can see, 
the nav mesh actually won't go any further and it, it bumps up to the edge so what you do you'd get your verticals right up to the edge and make sure that they're grounded and you would do the same for the other side and you try to meet those two verticals right up to each other just like that and you want to make sure it's like that right across the edge of the cell now it's very difficult to find out where the edge of the cell is but you, you can sort of find it can be quite fidgety depends on the size of the sort of nav mesh you're trying to do but once you've done that it's our good old friend the tick there you tick that it will reevaluate. you can see it doing it down there cell complete and then you won't have had any lines to begin with and as long as you've got those green lines going straight across and there's no gaps in it uh, there'll be a gap where you've got verticals in the middle but as long as there's no gaps in it that should mean that you've been successful and that's another thing that people have been having trouble with is NPC stopping dead and not being able to cross a line that's why you need that sort of little bridge across the uh, the two if you will uh, that's pretty much all I need to add for exterior nav meshing um, other than when you're nav meshing on terrain uh, make sure that the nav mesh is never over the terrain like too high make sure if anything it's always on the terrain or a little bit lower otherwise you'll have a, a load of nav mesh issues so if ever you've got nav mesh problem outside it's probably because there is the odd vertical or two or entire selection of nav mesh that hasn't been grounded into the floor so I think that's pretty much everything I can teach you on nav mesh right now uh, I hope that was better than the last tutorial if you have watched that I hope it was really helpful um, I want to thank everyone for the feedback I have been getting on my tutorial videos and the views and the subscribers so thank you very much for watching uh, please leave comments let me know how I've done please check my mods out uh, you can check out my website uh, follow me on Twitter loads of stuff all in the description thanks very much for watching and I will speak to you next time